You're listening to the Candid Comms podcast with Rachel Miller. Join me every week for practical advice and inspirational ideas to help you focus on all things internal communication related. Hello and welcome to the show. In this week's episode, you and I are going to be focusing on creating a sense of belonging for our employees. And as ever, you will leave with one thing to know, one thing to do, and one thing to think about. Are you ready? Let's get started. I wonder what the word belonging means to you. When I say that, how do you translate that in your mind? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? When you're planning your internal communication, do you have belonging in mind? If you've listened to season one of the Candid Comms podcast, you will have heard me talk about my intentions framework or my secret source, which is when I'm thinking about any internal communication before I start diving in and creating campaigns or messaging or plans, I look at What do I want employees to do, say, think, feel as a result of my internal communication and how do I want them to behave? I'll include that framework in the show notes at allthingsisee.com forward slash podcast. The key thing that I want us to focus on today, and this is what we need to know, is what do we want employees to feel through our internal communication? You may well have your own version of my intentions framework inside your organization. You might have think, feel, do, no feel, act, all sorts. There's lots of different combinations that are available. However, if you don't have the word feel inside that framework, I encourage you to put it in there because if the last 15 months have taught us anything in the wonderful world of internal communication is that we need to be making emotional connections with our employees. That shows up in a number of ways for me. That includes things like having emotional intelligence. It shows up through things like empathy and compassion. These are beautiful mindsets to have within any workforce, regardless of your size, whether you're a team of 10 or a team of 160,000 people, We need to be focused on the emotional connection, how we want our employees to feel. The world of work right now, as I'm recording this in June 2021, is changing. There's lots of changes on the horizon for many different organisations, particularly because of hybrid work. So what that means is as we start to edge our way back into some kind of normality or some kind of focus on the future of work inside our organisations, we're looking at how do we reimagine and recreate the environments that our employees find themselves in. Regardless of your situation, whether you have frontline workers, whether you have people all in one office, whether you're having a mixture of people working at home and working in your place of work, the focus for us needs to be creating a sense of belonging. So what you need to know is what that means for your organization. What does that mean to you? If I say, do you have a sense of belonging in your organization? What would you say? If you would say, yes, I believe we do have a sense of belonging, to what? Are our employees engaged with their role or engaged with the organisation? And there's a difference between role engagement and organisational engagement. I'll include some information in the show notes from Dr. Kevin Ruck at PR Academy. He's written about the difference between role engagement and organisational engagement. So let's just put that into context. Imagine you are a midwife, for example. And your passion is your profession. You love being a midwife. You love working inside hospitals and you love delivering babies, perhaps. Now, does it matter to you which particular hospital trust that you work for? So here in the UK, we have the National Health Service. Does it matter to you which NHS, National Health Service, trust that you work for? Possibly. Or is what matters to you your actual job? You're engaged with your role as a midwife rather than the organisation. 
most internal communication goes in at an organizational level. So we talk a lot about how amazing it is to be part of this wider organization. And what we miss comms friends, and I encourage you to think about this for your own organization, is how do we really value and affirm our employees for the types of jobs that they do? Whether they're accountants, whether they're retail employees, whether they are nurses or midwives, how do we demonstrate through our internal communication that they are valued and that they are important, not just about the collective picture of our organization? There's many ways you can do that. That feels like a whole separate podcast episode in its own right, and maybe I'll record that in future. But the key for me is how do we create a sense of belonging, not only to our role, to our team, to our department, our country, our region, but also to our organization. So we need to know what we mean when we're talking about belonging. I'm gonna share a link in the show notes to a really good study from Deloitte, which was focused on belonging and how to create the conditions for belonging to happen inside our organizations. So we need to know what we mean. If your answer to my question of, is there a sense of belonging inside your organization is no, why is that? What's missing? What needs to happen for your employees to feel a sense of belonging, either with their jobs or with the organization? What would that look like? What would that feel like? What would it sound like to have a sense of belonging? I recently gave the keynote speech at the Public Relations Institute of Ireland conference, which was wonderful. They were such a warm bunch of people. They made me feel so incredibly welcome. So thank you so much to everybody at the PRII for inviting me to join you virtually for your conference and talk about all things internal communication related. Part of the keynote that I gave, I did a 45 minute session and part of that keynote was focused on hybrid working, particularly the future of work. And I focused in on belonging. I looked at why is belonging important to help us engage our hybrid workers? It's important to engage any workers. And when I talk about engage in that context, I'm talking about how do we help our people to thrive? How do we create the conditions where our employees really feel that they are connected to the organization, to each other and to our purpose? Whether we're curing patients, selling widgets, transporting people, how do we focus on creating that really clear sense of belonging? One of my fellow speakers as part of that conference was Sally Ann Fisher, who's the head of comms at Trinity College in Dublin. She talked about collegiality and it was fascinating to me to listen to her stories. She was talking about COVID and talking about how they were working really hard as a college to connect their students with each other, particularly their global students. And she was talking about that mindset as collegiality and in my mind it's the same as belonging she was talking about how do we make people still feel part of this body of students and part of this family as a college when we're not together in person and particularly for their global students it was a really interesting talk so i encourage you to think about what does belonging mean for your organization how does it show up Belonging also exists in many facets of our lives. If you are a sports fan, for example, you will probably feel a sense of belonging and connectivity with a particular sporting team. You may wear their colours on your back. I have a friend of mine whose husband is a football fan, soccer fan here in the UK, and it extends so much that their colour is blue, it's dark blue and their rival team is red and he won't allow anything red in the house because he's so connected and has such a clear sense of belonging with his particular football team which is the blue team therefore he doesn't want anything red in the house to the point where there's no red cars no red clothing anything like that he's taken that sense of belonging to a massive scale But what does that mean for our own organizations? How does that show up? What does that sense of belonging look like? What are the artifacts that we have? If you want to know more about artifacts, I encourage you to look up Edgar Schein's work. I'll include a link in the show notes. 
he did some amazing work on culture and in particular looking at our espoused beliefs and values and artifacts physical representations of culture inside organizations so that might be that you have certain colors it might be that you have a lanyard that all your employees wear it might be the tone of voice it might be something very very physical so if you go to an office and i've done this particularly if i've been auditing organizations i've been going to different sites and places of work or my team have then we look at what's that connectivity between the sites. How is there a sense of belonging that's being fostered amongst these separate workplaces? How do they look and feel the same? What are the physical artifacts that are being used? And it may be things like um, colors of furniture or the decor, for example. All of that is focused on creating a sense of belonging and connecting our people to each other. So that's what we need to know when thinking about belonging. We need to define it inside our organizations. The second thing for us to focus on today is what do we need to do? And I'm going to share a link with you in the show notes to a blog post that I featured recently on the All Things I See blog. And it focuses on how to create a sense of belonging for hybrid workers. And it was written by internal comms consultant, Helen Deverell. I asked her to do some research and to speak to people within the world of internal communication to really gather their thoughts, their insights, their evidence about this topic. It's super important in any organization that we focus on belonging, but for right now, it feels even more critical. So through that article, Helen interviewed some people and I love some of the quotes that she featured. They include some comments from Isabel Collins, who is a belonging and culture consultant. If you've not discovered Isabel's work before, I encourage you to check it out. She records a podcast on belonging, which is really worth listening to. So I'll include the links to her work and her website in the show notes at allthingsic.com forward slash podcast. In that article that Helen kindly wrote for me, Isabel is quoted as talking about a sense of belonging. And she says, when thinking about the pandemic in particular, our sense of belonging was taken for granted until it was taken away. Isn't that poignant? That feels so true to me. It feels like lots of the experiences we have as employees and as part of organizations is things that we don't necessarily think about until suddenly, they're taken away. So suddenly you are working from home or suddenly you are disconnected from each other. So thinking about Isabel's work in particular, she shared some thoughts on belonging within this blog post. And she said, creating a sense of belonging for employees as we move towards new, more hybrid ways of working is underscored by three things. And she defined them as connection, compassion, and confidence. So connection is understanding how you can help people feel a part of, not apart from it, when you don't have a physical workspace. So how do you help your people feel connected? Compassion is recognizing that we've all experienced the pandemic very, very differently. So people will feel a sense of belonging to an organization that respects and facilitates that. I think that's really important. In particular, if you have frontline workers, then their place of work may not have changed. So when we're talking about how to create a sense of belonging now and in the future, how are we looking at our audience demographics? So how are you looking at your groups of employees? When you're thinking about your frontline workers, for example, what has changed for them or what has stayed the same? That's really important. There is never a one size fits all approach in an organization, but particularly if you have a certain percentage of your workforce who are frontline, who are retail employees, or who are working in hospitals or driving trains or buses, then actually their experience of the pandemic will be very different to our people who are working in offices. So compassion is the key here. Everybody has experienced the pandemic very differently. And the third part is confidence. And that's in two parts, really. It's got two meanings. Number one is having people that you can confide in 
to provide a sense of morale and mutual support, which I really like. And the second part is confidence and trust in your leadership inside your organisation. So how confident do your people feel? How do your leaders help employees feel a sense of belonging to the organisation? I look for that in the work that I do through All Things I See and my team do through All Things I See. When we're working with organisations and we quite often have conversations about trust and credibility for our leaders, add another lens to it. Think about how do our leaders have a role to play in creating a sense of belonging. So something that we need to do is to be really, really clear in terms of what are those conditions in our own organisation? So what does connection and compassion and confidence look like? How does it show up for our leaders? How do they evidence that they are focused on creating a sense of belonging? And most importantly, why does this matter? How does it help you achieve your company purpose? Another thing I want to highlight from the article that I'm referring to on my blog is a quote from Anique Simpson. And Anique is a change comms business partner here in the UK. And she talked about the need to be careful to not over engineer belonging. It's a very human thing that needs to happen organically. We need to avoid it becoming a tick box exercise that has no meaning. And I could not agree more with that. Thank you, Anique. So that's really important. If you're looking at the conditions inside your organization, if we're looking at how do we create a sense of belonging, it's how do you create a real sense of belonging? So something I want you to do is make sure that you are listening to your employees. So if you're trying things out, if you're focusing on how do we help our leaders be more human, be more authentic, be focused on creating that sense of belonging, demonstrating empathy, demonstrating compassion, and all the things that we need them to do in order to build up that currency of trust inside our organization. How can we make sure that it feels genuine? Because it needs to be. Our employees are the first ones to spot when it feels like things have been shoehorned in and they don't feel real and they don't feel human. So our role here, comms friends, is to check. We need to be listening constantly to our employees. We need to be gathering in their insights. So what, what's their feedback? What do they think about the things that we're saying inside our organization? And then what are the rumors? What are the concerns? What are the perceptions that our employees are having? Because if we're not listening to those things, then their perception becomes reality because we're not combating it. We're not going back to clarify, to check for understanding. Listening is such an important role when it comes to internal communication. It's our business to know our business. And part of that is creating the right environments for our employees to have access to two-way communication channels. So we are listening constantly because we want to avoid anything feeling like it's a tick box exercise. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, I will leave you with something to think about. See you in a moment. Comms friends, are you looking to improve your internal communication skills, knowledge or confidence? If so, I've got you covered. Check out my range of all things I see online masterclasses. There's a wide variety to choose from. If you're just starting out in the world of internal communication, then how to be an internal communicator or an introduction to internal communication channels are the courses for you. If you're working as an internal communicator, but you've got a new job, congratulations. My how to create a 90 day plan will guide you through the first three months in your new role. If you're working in house and thinking about becoming a consultant, then check out how to be a comms consultant exploration. This is the course that I wish existed back in 2012 when I was researching my own move from in house to consultancy. And finally, check out the hybrid working guide if you're focused on the future of work right now. An internal communicator's guide to hybrid working is the online masterclass for you. All of these courses can be taken at your own pace. There's no live lessons, so these are your courses done your way. See allthingsic.thinkific.com.
www.thepodcastmaker.com to check out all the different ones that are available to you. And don't forget, use the code CANDIDCOMS at the checkout to save 10%. And I hope to see you inside one of those masterclasses very soon. Welcome back. In the final part of today's episode, we're going to get organized and get a definition in place. So this is what I want you to think about. Now, if you're out and about right now, if you're having a run, walking the dog, pushing a baby in a pram, or maybe in the bath, then thank you for listening and <laughs> let me accompany you in all those various activities. But you may want to park this part and come back to it. You can think about it now, but you will need to write something down. So what I want you to be able to do is to fire up a Word document or grab a page of a notebook and write down belonging is dot dot dot. And then I'm going to encourage you to complete that definition. And I'm going to encourage you to do it a number of times. So think about it first from your perspective as an internal communicator. What does belonging mean inside your organisation? How do you define it? And write that down. Then do that again, but think about it from an employee's perspective. And I know that we're employees, but we have such unfiltered access to our organisation. We know the innermost workings and the innermost thoughts of our leaders, or at least we should do if we're doing our jobs well. It is our business to know our business. So often I find it's quite hard to separate ourselves out from being a regular employee, but but we are. So think about belonging through the eyes of your employees. So what does belonging mean to them? And then do that again from a leadership perspective. So how do your leaders view belonging or how do you think they view belonging? What does it mean to them? And write that down. Now that might feel really, really difficult. And if it does, bear with me because I find whenever I'm doing this sort of exercise with all things I see, clients or comms friends, if that feels really difficult, flip it around. So instead of saying belonging is, let's write down what it's not. So belonging isn't a tick box exercise. It's not being seen to do something to create a sense of belonging amongst our employees that is false, that is forced and false and doesn't feel genuine, for example. So flip it and then think about it again from your employee's perspective. Think about it again from your leader's perspective. And you could include whoever you want in this exercise. This is your exercise. This is something for you to think about. It might be that you think about it from your customer's perspective or your potential employee's perspective. The choice is yours. This is your exercise. You can write what you like. And when you've written that out and you've created those definitions, what are you going to do as a result? Now, you will have heard me talk about this a lot if you've been listening to season one of the Candid Comms podcast. In my work, I use start, stop, continue a lot. It's really, really super simple. But if you've got your definition and you've mapped out, this is what belonging is to our organization, so what? So what are you gonna do as a result of defining it? How are you gonna turn it into action? How are you gonna make something which feels quite intangible, tangible? One of the ways that I do that is look at, okay, so how do we bring this to life? What do we as a comms team need to start, stop, continue? What do we as an organization need to start, stop, continue? That complete exercise will help you gather your thoughts on belonging. It will help you articulate and define and bring it to life for your own organization. The final thing I want to leave you with today is a thought around what you could do. If you're thinking about creating a sense of belonging, it all feels a bit optional, then one of the frameworks that I use a lot in my work is what do we gain, what do we lose? So just take a huge step back with me right now. Think about this topic really objectively because you could do something or you could do nothing. And what would the impact be for your organization, particularly if we're focusing on the future of work right now? Look at what would we gain as an organization if we really invested time, money and effort in focusing on creating a sense of belonging? What would the outcome be? So what would happen as a result of doing this sort of work? And then conversely, what would we lose? 
So what would we gain by doing this sort of work and what would we lose? Now I'm gonna hazard a guess here comms friends that what you would gain would far outweigh what you would lose. I use that a lot to help me focus on making the right decisions both for my clients and for my own business for all things I see. Because you, when you're thinking about what could I do, then breaking it down in terms of what would we gain and what would we lose, I find helps me clarify my thoughts. And I prefer that to using pros and cons because sometimes I think if I go into a pros and cons mindset, it's very positive, negative. Actually, what do we gain? What do we lose enables me to surface other feelings and other emotions and just it's a richer experience for me in terms of tapping into the way that I'm thinking. You can use that in any part of your organization. If you're having really difficult conversations with stakeholders, try this. Let me know how you get on. Do get in touch with me and find me online. You can tweet me at all things I see. Find me on Instagram, Rachel All Things I See. Look me up on LinkedIn, Rachel Miller, or go to allthingsisee.com forward slash contact and send me a note through my website. What I want to know is what impact does this have? So when you're having conversations with stakeholders, for example, who say we must have this story on the internet, look at what would you gain by saying yes to that and what would you lose? And then think about what would they gain and what would they lose? Use it as a mechanism to gather your thoughts do let me know how you got on with that. I'd love to know. There was a lot in this episode. I hope you found it really helpful to help you define, refine, and focus on creating a sense of belonging. If you're already doing this, brilliant. I would love to hear from you. If you've got a fantastic story that you'd love to share, why not get in touch with me through any of the mechanisms that I just mentioned and offer to write a guest post to share your wonderful experience and stories with readers of my All Things I See blog. I would love to hear from you. So I hope you found this episode useful. As ever, please do get in touch and let me know what you're going to do differently as a result of listening to this episode of the Candid Comms podcast. And remember, what happens inside is reflected outside. See you again soon.